Okay, now, question. Why doesn't it say this? It's a real question, have a think about it. Why is it that actually everyone knows what to do with this without that being there? Erica, what do you think? We're trying to put as little information as possible on here. We don't want extra redundant information. Well, this is something that's only in X's, and then you're being told integrate with respect to X, right? So clearly, these boundaries must be X boundaries. Does that make sense? Okay. However, and this is really important for what we're about to do today, and I actually want you to write this on the next line. That, you know, labeling of those boundaries is actually implied. We don't need to write it because everyone knows where the three and the four are going to go, but it's actually there. It's kind of hiding. Just like when you have, you know, something like this. There's a multiplication sign hiding between the five and the bracket, but we kind of assume that we don't have to write it, so, you know, but it's implied, so it's important. Okay, now we're under the heading of integration by substitution. We met this earlier, but I intentionally told you back then, I'm not telling you everything because I don't want your brains just to melt into a mess in the first lesson on this topic. Okay? But now it's time to have a look at how this is different to the previous ones you've had a look at. And it's all to do with these boundaries, right? Now how would I do this by substitution? This particular question and in extension one, you'll be given the substitution where it's required, is let u equal, now before I give it to you, take a guess. What do you think? It's probably going to be the x minus 3, right? whatever's under here. Now you will be supplied with one, but it's not that hard to guess what it might be because this is the problem, right? If I can let that equal that, then I'll be able to get rid of that thing underneath the square root, okay? What do I usually do at this point? You've done integration by substitution a couple of times. What has to be done with this? Okay, I want to differentiate because this is currently integrating with respect to x, but I'm going to get it to be with respect to u. So let's do that. What is du on dx in this case? Just one because it just comes from this, right? So in this context, it's okay for me to write that du is actually the same as dx. Y you see that? If I treat it as a fraction in this context, okay? So I can, when I'm ready, I can just swap this out, okay? It's a bit weird though. Usually there's like something else flying around and I want to get rid of all of the x's, not just some of them. I can get rid of this, yeah? I can get rid of this. How do I get rid of this? I don't want there to be an x there. I need everything to be used. Hmm. This is a really interesting spot. I'm about to show you, and when you see it, you'll be like, oh, of course. But this is a really important moment, because I'm about to show you something that is bleedingly obvious. There's no working to do, really, okay? But if you can't see it yet, how are you going to get there? Okay, Michael, what do you think? We're searching for an x, right? We have an x. It's right there. No differentiation required to get to just an x. So as Michael suggested, if you just go straight from this line and just add 3 to both sides, you get that. Are you okay with that? So that's going to get rid of this. Everything is fine. Okay. Let me tick this off. Maybe if you have another color, you can do it with me. I know how to get rid of this. It's going to be du. I know how to get rid of this. It's u, and I just worked out how to get rid of this, it's uh, u plus 3, okay? But can you see why I made a point about these things and these things, right? These are also in terms of x, so I need to get rid of these as well. If x equals 4, if x equals 4, what should u be? It should just be 1, because it would be 4 take away 3, right? So when x equals 4, I'll just put this over here on the right hand side, when x equals 4, that makes u equal to 1. And by the same logic, when x equals 3, that's the other boundary, that's why I'm choosing this number, u is equal to 0. Yeah, 3 minus 3. So now it's not just this piece and this piece and this piece, I can also get rid of these two pieces. Now I'm actually ready to substitute. Does that make sense? So it's just one extra step, but you need to learn to watch for it. I'm going to leave all this stuff here because that's part of my working for this particular question. 
I've done all this pre-work so I can get rid of all the X's all at once. Okay, I'm gonna encourage you not to try and mix up the U's and the X's because otherwise, you know, usually you write it like this and then you'll be like, which, which boundaries are they in? Are they X's or U's? Do it all in one hit so there's no ambiguity. Equals, integral from what to what? Have a look at the new boundaries. Which way around is it? Be careful. It looks to me like three to four will become zero to one. Okay, now just a quick note, you're gonna encounter questions in a minute where that won't be the case. You'll actually have to create an integral from one to zero, that's a bit strange. Okay, but if you want, go back to our notes on properties of identified integrals or ask me a question, I can explain what that means. In this case, it's fine, it's ascending. I'm gonna get rid of the x, what is it? It's u plus three. I'm gonna get rid of the x minus three, that's just u and dx, I can just swap. Shape by presto, okay? So this is really good, everything's been translated. We're still not quite out of the woods yet though because I have no idea what this is. Like what, what is this form? It's not a form that I recognize. So what could I do with this that might make it a little easier to work with? I can just expand, can't I? This is u to the power of a half. This is u to the power of one. So when I multiply those, I'm gonna get u to the power of three on two. When I multiply this, I'm gonna get three to the power of, sorry, u to the power of, it's just the square root of u, right? So it's a half. Is that okay? Give it that. Now we can integrate. So, what are we gonna get here? u to the power of three on two. Power is gonna now become five on two and I wanna divide by that. So I'm gonna get this, is that okay? In the past when I was first doing this, I would have written this as an awkward fraction. I'd go u to the power of that and then I'd divide by that. But as you become more familiar with it, you can see, oh, just dividing by a fraction is multiplying by its reciprocal, okay? So that's fine. This is gonna become three over two. When you divide by three over two, what's this become? So, if at this point you are not sure, that's a signal to you that you should write it uh, like so, right? If you're not sure, then don't, don't try and do the mental arithmetic and get it wrong, do it like this. But then do you see what's gonna happen? This is gonna happen, right? Uh, cancel, cancel, you're dividing by a half, which is the same as multiplying by two. Is that, a, that okay? Right. So if, you, if you're in doubt, then, um, then actually go ahead and write the fraction. Even if it's awkward, you'll get it right. We're ready to substitute now, so let's do it. I'm gonna get two fifths plus two. I've just put one in there, yep. Take away, what's the lower boundary? In this case, as commonly, it's zero, okay? Um, two and two fifths, happy times, okay? So, let's just rewind a second. Come back all the way over here. When you get given the substitution, remember to use it to get rid of everything. I like writing this to give me a reminder that that three and that four also need to be replaced, just like everything else, okay? Um, once you've done all your pre-work, okay, replace everything in one hit, and then treat it just like any other integral that you normally would. Make sense?